Good evening, dear friends. This is Mr. Milagris Pereira of HLI Goa. And today we are having this special function called the Day of the Unborn, the Feast of the Annunciation, and the fourth episode of Celebrate Life and also the presentation of the awards on the topic of motherhood. My dear friends, the first part consists of this presentation which I am making and the second part is the presentation of the certificates and the prizes which the compare will make. I begin. Will you say yes to life? That's the question I pose at the beginning of this session. Will you say yes to life? I will repeat it one last time before I end. In the first century, the Roman emperors and all the Romans, they had this big uh, gladiator uh, theaters, the Colosseum, where healthy, fit, energetic men fought to entertain the people who were sitting in the theater, the Colosseum. Thousands of people watched as in a very brutal manner one healthy contestant threw the other one down and the fate of the person who's down rests upon the emperor. The people are all shouting. The sword is just close to his neck and at a thumbs up or a thumbs down, the fate of the man down is sealed. So if the emperor says thumbs down, he will just slice him through and that's the end of his entire life. No matter how healthy, how energetic and competent he was. Even I might think that the emperor was cruel but it was a system. There were thousands who were sitting, and they too were the part of the decision of making a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And on the face, it might appear that the emperor and the people did. But if you look deeply, it was every participant who agreed to that competition. Every trainer, every mother or father who agreed, son, you can kill to live. Today, when we look back, we can all say how gruesome, how cruel, how so, how much inhuman the blood of healthy men lost just to entertain people. But honestly speaking, that theater that Colosseum, that arena has widened and encircled the whole globe. Whether it is a Nero or a Diocletian or a Trojan or whoever, it matters very little. But practically, the whole world is into a game of thumbs down or thumbs up. How? This title called Attack on Life already sent to you is what is happening globally around the world. I'm going to show to you a few videos, roughly about 12 minutes video clips, four minutes, two minutes, three minutes, and explain at the same time.
I don't want to miss out on my time because we are bound by time. My friends, some years back, there was a little boy called Charlie Gard, born to a couple in England, London, and he developed a mitochondrial disease or some, some type of a genetic disorder for which to do anything to save this life was pretty difficult. And so the parents tried their best, but the efforts were not meeting with medical success. It came to a point where the parents decided to take the child out, out of the country to the US. But the government came in with bin. The doctors stood in between. They said, your child doesn't have any chance of survival. So officially, we deny you the right to take care of your own child, even if you want it, because it doesn't make sense. I mean, at, at first, it was like a mild shock. What? My child, my son. But they said, no, this is the state. This is the governance. The child is, is practically in a vegetative state. He has no chances of survival. But the parents are saying, doesn't matter. There are people and governments and authorities who are willing to support us. For example, Donald Trump, the Pope, Pope Francis, a couple of other high-ranking officials and dignitaries invited Somebody even offered free citizenship for that child to be treated. People raised funds on social media, but the government did not allow, and finally they removed the tubes and dehydrated that child. This is the global arena. This is the Colosseum which is getting wider. Another baby called Indy also developed some type of a syndrome like that. Exactly in the same manner, they struggled at their best in the very hospital that they were in. But the doctors in the government stood in between, no, your child doesn't have any chances of survival in his best interest. These are the legal terms. In his best interest, we have to starve him to death in his best interest because he's not going to survive. But then there are a host of medical practitioners, surgeons, experts who are willing to offer. Maybe the chances of survival are just 10%, but they are willing to offer, but they don't give. So there's a thumbs down. Who are these people who are creating this thumbs down? They are our elective, elected representatives. As you entered, you have seen two boards on your left and right. Just some old uh, printouts, not really recent. The members of HLI Goa travel globally, most of the time in Asia, few times in Europe, and several times in the US, attending functions like this, where there is an attack of, on life, and what best we can do to save human life. My dear friends, I was in the Philippines in December uh, last, I mean 2023, and from Canada, there was a speaker called Amanda Achtman. Amanda, Amanda. Acht is C-H, Achtman, M-A-N. And this girl, uh, she should be in her 30s, maybe less than that. But she works for uh, uh, some uh, NGO or something like that. And is constantly fighting against MAID. What is MAID? Medically assisted suicide. Death medically assisted, you know, so assistant in dying, so nicely called, it sounds so good. Oh, somebody's getting a noble death, but the truth is altogether different. So in our videos, you can check all this, they are there all on the YouTube, Amanda Achtman, just type Amanda Achtman, and you'll find one blonde girl with curly hair, very energetic, young, tall, and she'll take interviews with elderly people this particular lady, she has interviewed and 
something called hope, you know. She gave me hope. She came to the U.S. and started working as a teacher. Got married to a man from the U.S. She came from yeah, some country. And uh, they, were, they were married f for some 37 years. He developed some sickness, he died. And life moved on for her with her children and grandchildren. One day, she just slipped on the road and went to the uh, doctors. And she was diagnosed with some degenerative disease for which there is no cure. In actuality, the thing that happens is that she loses uh, some muscle control. I wish I had the video because all the medical terms are there. And there is some type of a pain for which you really require to take hard drugs, I mean real drugs that, that affect your system. But uh, against the agony of suffering, you know, the, she, she needs the drugs just to uh, keep herself going. So uh, she was on drugs and uh, once her uh, line of, you know, particular prescription that goes on for three months or whatever is over, she went to the medic and the medic uh, said, sorry, I can't prescribe the drugs, drugs anymore. So why not? Because the government doesn't allow. Why? What's the problem? No, because you're old and, uh, I mean, uh, your, your situation is not going to improve. And they want to run a case against her that she should be terminated. Medically assisted assistance in dying. Medical assistance in dying. M-A-I-D, medical assistance in dying. She says, I, I don't want to die. I'm happy with my children and grandchildren. I'm happy in the community I live. But they're they are promoting it to her. A 27-year-old woman, married, and within one month of marriage, she suddenly gets uh, into a uh, heart attack and she loses her, uh, some uh, brain function and she collapses and uh, rushes to the hospital and uh, they uh, diag diagnose that she's gone into a vegetative state. Uh, that is something called PVS, uh, permanent vegetable, vegetative state, something like that. But her own parents and her brother, they fight the hospital, so we can take care of our daughter and sister, but her husband doesn't cooperate. So the husband, all whatever I'm saying is on the net, you just have to type, Terry Shiavo, T-R-R-I, Shiavo, S-H-I-A-V-O. It's just there. Hundreds of videos will be there. My friends, they struggle against the court. They say, we don't mind the means, how much you would spend in keeping her uh, alive. But the medical uh, field and the government say, but of what use she is, that is for us to decide. No, that's not for you to decide. That's for the government to decide. And so, big, big story made short. She comes, the, there comes a day where they lose the battle to the U.S. Congress and an order is passed that her tubes should be removed. Her brother and her parents went on record with competent medical practitioners, surgeons, people who, who said she's responding. She reacts to stimulus when you say certain things. She smiles, but they just watered down, brushed it, said this is nothing. Uh, in some rare cases, it just happens. But, she no, but, she, but, she, but the brother says, her brother says, but that's for us. I mean, she can die in peace in our home. Maybe our efforts won't succeed. But no, the government will not allow you to take your own patient home. And so the U.S. Supreme Court passes a judgment to, be, to remove her tubes. As a, a gentleman, sadly, his name is called Frank Pavon, Mr. Frank Pavon. And uh, he says he had gone to visit her. And uh, he said, it was very strange that in the room where Thierry Chavo was there, there was a flower pot with 
flowers and a stalk and water. A flower pot, I mean these are all artificial flowers. F flowers and a stalk and water. It's very strange that we put water for these things which are going to die anyway. Because we just want to keep them alive for a while. But they, a living person, made in the image and likeness of God, has removed the water, removed the system that keeps her going. When they had the means, the desire, and the whole world was with it. It's all there on the net. My friends, now, on the better side, very recently, I guess maybe four or five months back, we had a call from South Goa, somewhere in Honavar, a lady was uh, a couple from London, uh, residents of Honavar. They contacted us for uh, what to do, just help us in making a decision. We have a baby with a certain syndrome, I don't, I don't know whether it's a T18 or T21, and uh, these children are uh, highly congenitally defective, uh, what to do? And all that I said was, don't kill a living child. And the doctors are harassing us, this child is going to die. If the child is going to die, let the child die. But don't hasten his death. Don't, don't kill the child. That's the basic law. And we had to strengthen her, and she was staying quite remote in Honavar, not, not the main city. We literally wanted to send a team over there to give her a moral boost. But somehow, she was convinced with the amount of papers we sent to her on the internet, and she was convinced that she should not die. The child will die. Let the child will die. The child is going to die anyway. Why are you wasting your time? No, let the child die. She took nothing. For a baby with T21 syndrome, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just chose to stay at home. And you know what? Some months later, she gives a call. Hey, I delivered. Let me see. Who? Baby boy, girl, I am forgetting. How is he? Perfectly all right. Nothing. There is no T, there is no B, nothing. Absolutely. A young mother in Valsam. I happened to meet this woman when I was at a night vigil. I was behind. I just went to her. Then I said, Do come what may, please keep this baby. And she started crying. And I said, hey gosh, what did I say? Keep this baby. I don't even know whether she's pregnant. And then she turned around me and she said, do you know uh, that I'm pregnant? I said, I don't know. I just said. And she was crying, but because the program was going on in the church, she just quietened down. And later on, she told me that her baby is having Down syndrome. Detected quite early, repeated the scans several times, confirmed Down syndrome, advised MTP, medical termination of pregnancy, kill the baby. What do I do? God already spoke to you. I'm a human being. God already told you. Come what may, keep the baby. I mean, if there is some way by which the medical field stands by you and help you give some care for the baby, go ahead. But not kill the baby. And she listened to me. Good for her. She delivered a baby. I have no idea that she delivered a baby. Four years later, I met this mother again. What a little boy. And said, do you know this one? I said, no, I, know, I don't know this one, but looks like you, surely your son. He is the same boy who was in the womb with the Down syndrome. Are you telling me? He has no Down syndrome? There is no Down syndrome. When the boy was born, the doctor is lifting the baby, checking baby, you know, turning, turning and all. And the mother is saying, what happened? Is something wrong with my baby? No, the doctor is saying, there was Down syndrome. Where is the Down syndrome? So the mother said, are you not happy that I have a healthy child? He said, no, 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 he will die in a month. So what type of a medical practitioner are you? What type of a doctor? Anybody will say, don't worry, don't worry, 
turn your uh, you know eyes to god god will do he said no he's going to die in a month the baby did not die in a month the doctor came to see because this woman did not report six months he came again one year again i saw the baby at four years held the baby i am not saying that because this has happened that the case will repeat for every case but what i am saying is today these thumbs up people are all around us sometimes we ourselves are the thumbs up people a mother kills her son daughter along with her boyfriend or her husband and often times in laws in laws much against the wishes of their daughter in law sometimes against the wishes of the of their son so it looks like the thumbs up people are all around us to say yes to life is not so easy but in the gospel of luke chapter 1 verse 20, 30 uh, 26 to 38 which is the reading for today's feast of uh, the annunciation especially in the in the verse 38 she said i am the handmaid of the lord read that verses carefully angels can come and speak to people angels can give you insight into naming the people that's what archangel gabriel said don't worry you're going to have a child and you are going to name him jesus and he will redeem his people so angels from god can come they can speak to people they can give names and they can prophesy what is going to happen oh blessed is that woman who said may it happen to me as god has willed my dear friends as i conclude for uh just maybe a few more minutes before i take the second thing the celebrate life musical thing each one of us are often faced with decision making what do we do in a particular situation not necessarily you know just pregnancy but so many things about life concerning life if we have a relationship with the creator then angels can come they can speak to us god's word they can define our activity and prophesy what is going to happen in the future for us whatever whatever not just about pregnancy about the many things in life especially at at turns which are moral in nature what do i do only if we have a relationship with the creator otherwise without us desiring it without us even knowing it we might end up in the thumbs down camp where we may say a small word ago the exam burgin zale and so the eta you already have three now you want a fourth one i think it's enough ha huh? it sounds nice but we don't realize it a sword is there on the neck of the child and so you can get convinced by a mother in law father in law maybe your own parents in some cases or the society oh everybody is looking at me because i have four children my husband says enough i can't no 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 close the tubes or whatever hmm. yeah so we don't realize that one little word can either mean a thumbs down or a thumbs up some of the mothers who participated in this contest i know not not really at close length but i assure you in this audience there are mothers who have not less than eight children here as the program unfolds you're going to see whether they became poor impoverished dying 
sick. I hope you can hear it from their mouth. So in continuity with our types of programs which we have been doing for the last 28 years or so, we decided to float a poem, a contest for a poem on motherhood. I don't want to anticipate for the compare who will take up the presentation, but believe me, I, am, I was not one of the judges. The judges were three from Goa and one from uh, some other country, a uh, Goan, yeah. So when I myself went through, really, I, I don't know what to do because there's so much, so much of emotion and so much of passion. And of course, art of writing was there, you know. You could literally hear the home speaking. You can literally hear the children speaking. Mothers are penning down a poem. You can literally hear what is happening in the house if you have that sensibility of an artist. Friends, I'm really honored by your presence and especially those of us who are watching from other countries, especially in the Philippines, Malaysia, and uh, Croatia, uh, US, Rome, our affiliates, our other, other uh, pro-lifers around the world are watching. Thank you everyone who has uh, uh, contributed to making this day happen. Life is at, at stake, human life. It is so easy for us to hear, to hear things like other sex, sexist, I only heard about male and female. I know about male and female, but today there is a noise of over 120 sexes. Please go to LifeSite News. There is a particular journalist who will tell you what is happening in the trans area. A military man with his wife loses the custody of his 13-year-old daughter just because she posted on, face, on social media a line which said she wants to end her life. The police came to her house. Within 30 minutes, they took the daughter away. Much against the will of the parents. Why? Because she said, I feel like I'm a boy. So now we have a new terminology. Sex wrongly assigned at birth. What? A female. The terms now say, Sex wrongly assigned at birth. I'm just wondering what happened to our eyesight and common sense. We don't understand who's a male and a female. Oh, fluidity. Everything is fluid. So the father struggled to get, but he lost his custody of his daughter, a teenager. And then what happens? Through legal means, she's taken to a therapist who administers her drugs, to suppress her puberty, her hormones. And very soon, her upper body, the breast will be amputated, her down part will be removed, and in place, this is sickening. I'm using the mildest words, just for the sensibility of little children here. They remove the skin of the forearm, roll it into a tube, you already know what I'm trying to say. And attach it there, which can hardly perform the function. And if there is anything that comes out of it, it's just like a vomit. Sorry. But <laughs> please go on YouTube and check it yourself. He says that it is so sickening that this is legal. And they say, if we don't give this child to de determine what she wants, the right, the right, to do with her body what she wants to do, then you the parent, you the custodian, other criminal in the state takes you to jail. These thumbs up people are going to come for your children, my children, sooner or later. The arena is expanding. This is legal in Canada. Please check. Don't listen to me just because I'm telling. Go, <laughs> go on the internet and check on YouTube. My dear friends, so, when it comes to you and me, the big question is, 
will we like mary say yes to life or give an excuse in in place of a no that's the question therefore i end by the question that i asked at the beginning will you say yes to life thank you very much for your atten attention may i call upon the compare of the day uh she needs another microphone check hello everybody my name is evely pereira and i'll be your host for the remaining part of this event uh, now we will be having a short musical show this musical show is called celebrate life so this is the fourth episode of it the remaining three are on youtube on uh, hli goa india's uh, youtube channel get, get the book. So now as you know Mr Milagres Pereira will be performing he is the president of HLI Goa and he is also a singer and songwriter uh, along with him we have Elvis Mascarenas he is a renowned Goan singer and uh, Mr Milagres' son Evan Pereira who will be playing the keyboard let's welcome them with a round of applause So Elvis, you're going to start the show with uh, Marinaka. I will uh, maybe uh, he can take that other mic. Yeah. Thank you. Elvis is a personality by himself, but at one point of time, for five years, he was my student. Yeah, I'm going to show you my teachers soon. Okay. <laughs> um, When I first heard him he really moved my heart he is such a passionate singer today he is going to perform a song called Marinaka and uh, Elvis saw me um, uh, explain the pro life exhibition and uh, how this uh, babies are murdered and whatever that happens and when he saw uh, you know the passion in pro life he he too felt like contributing to pro life by his singing So uh, I'll give you a small uh, incident just to give you a brief for the song kind of an understanding uh, in into uh, the song so uh, a little uh, uh, girl uh, uh, is rescued by a man uh, from the railway track when he went for his toilet habits in the night where where the train track was not guarded one man at 12 o'clock in the night he goes and sees uh, a cow and a tr approaching train and so he feels that uh, uh, this girl is most uh, this cow is going to die and then when he goes further he realizes not a cow it's a girl and she's young and he pulls her before the train can get over we didn't show it exactly it's on youtube it's called walking hla goa india called walking you can check it and so he kept that girl in his house that night next morning he brought that girl for counseling and uh, i saw she was a ninth standard girl and uh, she said that uh, i became pregnant by a boyfriend who was 19 and i don't know what to do she did not even know that she was pregnant and uh, uh, at 4 uh, and 1/2 months something like that so we took her to the doctor did a scan and this and that and all and i just showed her this is what your baby likes now your whole idea of committing suicide is to solve a problem called shame i can show to you that you are actually aggravating your problem by committing suicide as of now just you and your boyfriend knows that you are pregnant nobody else knows the school knows you as a ninth standard girl okay suppose i keep you in an unwed mother's house and you spend four and a half months you forget your exam you deliver you come how many people know 
maybe the priest who go, whom you go for confession knows, and uh, the sisters or who were the caretakers in the unwed mother's home. Nobody else. Her parents were abroad. Then what happens? You continue with life. If that school doesn't take you, go to another school. You lose one year. But should you commit suicide, I'll tell you how many people come to know. First of all, there's a post-mortem. Paper, the, all the papers bring the news. You lose your name in your village, in your ward, in the school, in your parish, in the whole of Goa. How about that? And she could understand the calculations and the reasoning I gave her. And her boyfriend agreed. I wanted him to see what is happening. Hold him accountable. And she went, she stayed, and she delivered. Nine standard girl, 14 years, delivered. The baby went for adoption. She came home and continued her education in the same school next year. That boy was asked to pay 21,000 rupees. He was just working, had a saving of 5,000. He paid 5,000 for his girlfriend's delivery. In two years' time, he paid the remaining money. Today, they are happily married. With a, with a very firm conviction that they didn't kill a child, or they killed kill herself and lost his girlfriend, either way. Friends, please enjoy this song, Marinaka, Elvis Mascarenas. Purizo ek vote koruna, burgo puta roslo, chedu akwar dikuna, kalsa doko boslo, anik furar na dikuna, ebosyan koru udlo, puntum chatsu kiche for mohona. Sangur gyak tia kidak favo Mari nakai, my mari nakai Burgo to beheva hacho Duk tum chi kabar zao china Puro zao zona aundo Los tum chi lip deli kori pond Gulam tu pat ka hacho Odik bore burkyak tun zon dilen Sambal kai do de vatsom Mai mari na kai, mari na kai Burgo ho to behe vatsom Tuk tum chik ka bhar zao china Puro zao zona aundo Los tum chik lip te li kori puna Gulam tu pat ka hacho Odik borgem burgyak zolom dilen Sambal kai to de vacho Kazari zoryo tumi Devan ek tai lolyo Aushit ros lemon burge Zali tumi dukhi Aushit ailear soiri Sang daunai tattor tumi Burgyak mogan git limona Pas tu mi dileli mai Mari na kai, mari na kai Burgi ti deva hachi Kostum ka potele kore pun Sota govai za deli Tu kosti so si nastana sa Kuncor mun sha meo te heli Burgi deva chi dene Mandum tu ke, sodas tu 
shall ask the holy marina kai mai marina kai burgi ti deva chi kostum ka potere kore pun sada gobai jate li tu kosti so si nastana san kui chor mun shamel te heli jivi deva je de ne manun tu ke sada skushal aste li ডিফেক্টেড বুর্গে তুমছে এবট করু মন কেলে আনিক মন তুমছে তির জালে সাংডে আই কন দত্রাছে আস তুম কান গটাই আসা পুন ফার্যান সাইত কিতে তুমি ওস্কোত মন তুম কাই মারি তোর সান্তুম কাম পরে দিস্তেলে মারি না কাই মাই মারি না কাই পুর্গি ইতি দেও দিতা ঵াইড পরে তাচ্যা আতাতলে কেতা তো পরে করতা আইস তুম কাম তিং গোডে জোর দিস্তা পুন জেসু তাংকা রাগ বাবা তাংকা সাবাল বোইনি তে ফার তুম ছা মোগা ছে মারি না কাই মাই মারি না কাই বুর্গি হিতি দেও দিতা বাইট বারে তাচা আতাতলে কেতা তো বারে করতা আইস তুম কা পিগোডে জোর দিস্তা পুন Jesus sang hatita ya kadi sang suk tu bokto loi visru na kai baba ya kadi sang suk tu bokto loi visru na kai baba thank you Thank you very much Elvis and thank you lovely audience both live and those who are watching us online. Uh, my dear friends, uh, the next song is, just one moment, called Maink Sutta. I am checking how am I against time. Okay. We are quite good. Uh, my dear friends, uh, my mother went abroad when I was uh, 12 years of age. And uh, when I asked her, why are you living? She said, we are uh, poor and we cannot afford to continue life like this. You are not going to become big, you are not going to go into uh, good colleges and you are not going to become human beings. And I said, what's, prob what's the problem with poverty? But she tried uh, her best to convince me that she had to go. When she came back, I thought it was the end of poverty. As in we had good clothes, nice uh, smelling uh, uh, Kit Kat and spices and what not. Within a month, and every month somebody or the other bringing stuff from Kuwait, we were sending stuff from here so that they can have the Goan culture day. And my mother and my uh, other family members who went eventually, uh, they sent uh, Kuwait to Goa. Two years later when, I, when, she, ca when she came and I asked her, uh, now it's okay? Is it fine? She said, no, you just purchased the property. Now we have, we have to build a house. So what's wrong with this house? She said, no, we have to go higher. And the next uh, day, my father went along with her. Two years later, both of them came down. And when they went, my elder brother went. Six years later, when they came down, 
my only sister went like this eight trips 16 years i was 12 and i became a big boy in 1990 when she came for the last time somebody told us uh, your mother is come in the vehicle could not come to our house she's asked for a chair a chair yeah she can't walk i got a shock so we took a chair and four tagda man you know strong man they went they put my mother on a chair and they lifted on their shoulders and brought my mother she could walk but she couldn't walk that distance of 100 meters i was really dismayed my countenance fell because she hardly looked like a woman there was a scarf in place of her black hair and one side of her body there was nothing there it was flat and she was walking like this and then we knew that she had gone through mastectomy she survived only 3 months and she died 3 days before she died she said as a young boy you were always asking me questions today is my time to give you answers when you were asking me do you have to go again i never realized it was a voice of god who was asking me do you have to go when you were asking me what is wrong with poverty i didn't realize it was the voice of god that was asking what is so wrong with poverty but son when we were poor that world of quiet looked like a cloud when i actually landed there there was nothing there it looked nice from a distance but I, when i landed there when i realized i'm in the cloud there is nothing there she said all the money is there the house everything the daughter got married the sons got married but in this house there was once upon a time a family there were prayers three times a day there were laughters and there were tears but at the end of the day there was a mother and a father today there are hardly three people somebody wakes up walks out somebody walks in somebody walks out there is no connectivity when we had no money we had time for each other and we had time for god today this house has collapsed my son when you become big you don't repeat my mistakes i should have told this to your wife she said or to my daughter because only one sister or to the other wives but since you are there with my at my bad side i'm telling you stay with your children that time none of my kids were born when you will get she said but stick to your children five of them this one the youngest there are there were three uh, two more or three 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 children here one is studying abroad married and studying abroad five children i tried my best to listen to my mother but many times i start searching for my mother i'm nearing 60 still looking for my mother believe me sometimes i go to the fields which are overgrown with thorns and imagine oh there she was putting water for the pumpkins there she was watering the chilies in this patch there was nachna ragi and over there there were chilies everything is overgrown mother is nowhere there sometimes i wish i can buy a ticket and go to the places where she worked the houses or the kitchens by god's grace i can afford just for me a 16 years is not a little time my pre- my my childhood was practically gone you will never understand what a mother means to your child till you hear them cry so mind sota this is my youngest yeah <laughs>
खाऊक ना मुण जेवक ना मुण गालफान गेली गोरी बामी नेणा रामी तू चिंताली पाय तो आमचो पिता सोरो दुख जाताली सोळा वर्ष गालफान सारून पाय तू मेरी खाऊक ना मुण जेवक ना मुण गालफान गेली गोरी बामी नेणा रामी तू सांगताली पाय तो आमचो पिता सोरो दुख जाताली सोळा वर्ष गालफान सारून पाय तू मेरी शेताच्या बांधणी सोदता तुका दोऱ्याच्या लारानी सोदता तुका गोराच्या कोणशानी सोदता तुका मोगाची माय मोजी खुं मेळोत माका गेलो बाई गेलो गोरु खाली शमय बाबडी खुश कोरी गोर राखताली उलूंक माका कोणूच मेळना दुख जाताली गोरीब सण पयस गेली मायना जाली बायकूय वेलो बाई गेलो गोरु खाली शमय बाडी खुश कोरी गोर राखताली उलोक माका कोणूच मेळना दुख जाताली गोरूप सण पयस जाली मायना जाली गावांच्या वाड्यानी सोदता तुका पोपलाच्या बागानी सोदता तुका काजूनी माडानी सोदता तुका मोगाची माय मोजी खुं मेळोत माका यू शुड बी प्राऊड नोईंग द फॅक्ट दॅट युअर अ मदर दॅट यू हॅव लिल एंजल्स इन युअर arms he should be proud of their siblings or if they are grown ups and married the gift of motherhood is a great gift from heaven i slop kit lo zada pi so por des down tra bur gang sodun gaun sodun jin su data पैसे जोडून बाटबेस घेऊन नवसून हाडटा भुरगे आमचे पिडार जातले म्हण बी स्वता आयज लोक कितलो जादा बी सोपोर देश धावता भुरग्यांक सोडून गावूय सोडून जीण सुदाता पैसे जोडून बाटबेस घेऊन जीण वावरता भुरगे आमचे पिडार जातले म्हण बी स्वता भुरग्यांक पैसे सोता तुका वळले ने सोत नका ती सोता तुका जेवण कसले सोता ती सोता तुका आवय लागी जाय ती सोता तुका भुरग्यां पैसे नका ती सोदता तुका वळले ने सोड नका ती सोदता तुका 
कसले जेवण चलता ती सोदता तुका आवय लागी जाय ती सोदता तुका आवय लागी जाय ती सोदता तुका God give eternal rest to my mother. I am proud I am her son. I am also proud that I have a wife who has given me five children. Oh, wonderful. You are going to see my wife shortly. But for the time being, look at my daughter. Thank you. Thank you. This was such a beautiful and touching performance. Now we will, um, now we are entering into the second half of the event, which is the uh, award ceremonies. So we are really glad that you all are all here and now I will start with, by introducing our judges and our chief guest. So our chief guest is Mrs. Buleta Fernandez. Here she is, everybody give her a round of applause. She. She is married for 25 years and a homemaker and wife. Her husband is a merchant navy captain. She is a proud mother of eight wonderful children. All of her children are homeschooled and the eldest is a pilot by profession married in the USA. <laughs> While two of his children are studying in the college, the rest are still homeschooled. Her cheerful demeanor radiates warmth and joy, making her the heart and soul of her household. Over to you for a few words. Don't know how to express myself. Mr. Milagris already spoke about motherhood and the joy of children being around you. So all I can say in just one, one sentence for today on the Feast of the Annunciation was to be open to God and just say, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be unto me as your will. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your beautiful words, Mrs. Villeta. Uh, for our uh, first two judges uh, who are not present here, one is in Croatia and one couldn't make it, unfortunately. So first we have Ethel Pereira. She uh, holds a bachelor's degree in arts, majoring in philosophy. She re is re resides in Zagreb, Croatia, and she's currently pursuing a degree at the Faculty of Philosophy and Religious Sciences. She's an avid reader and has been to several international conferences. Her love for learning and interest in studying foreign cultures has a attracted like-minded people across the globe. She is married to her beloved husband, Ivan, and they are expecting their first child. Next, let's clap for her. The next judge is Dr. Elvis, an enthusiastic general physician practicing in Kolva, whose expertise is matched only by his warmth and compassion. With a steadfast commitment to providing exceptional care to his patients, Dr. Elvis embodies the epitome of professionalism and empathy in his medical field. Beyond his medical knowledge and skill, it is his genuine concern for the well-being of others that truly sets him apart. Let's clap for him. So now on to the judges who are present here. Okay. So we have first, uh, over here we have Mrs. Lily de Souza. Everybody put your hands together for her. She is a dedicated educator with a diverse background in teaching and a passion for fine art. With a bachelor's degree in fine arts and an MA in English, she has been shaping young minds since the age of 25. Her teaching exper experience spans all levels from kindergarten to postgraduates. And in her leisure time, she finds delight in painting, tending to her garden, and delving into the pages of a good book. 
She dedicates her expertise in preparing students for the IELTS and TOEFL exams, ensuring they achieve their academic and professional goals. And we also have Dr. Malaika Gracious. Let's put our hands together for Dr. Malaika. A judge, Dr. Malaika, runs her own physical ther therapy clinic by the name Inner Strength Physiotherapy at Chinchini. She, is a, she has an experience of 18 years and has worked at eminent hospitals like Wokhard Nussi, American Heart Foundation, Belgaum, and is an ex-lecturer at KLES Physiotherapy College, Belgaum. She is a mother of two daughter kids and also enjoys baking and crafting. With healing in her hands and a neck for creating mouth-watering treats, Dr. Malaika brings both ease and joy to whom she serves. Let's clap for all of our judges. Let's call them together, all the judges. Please so come forward, those who are present here. Dr. Malaika, gracious, and... And the chief guest, too. And the chief guest, too. Mrs. Lily de Souza. May I add a word at the Evely? She is my teacher. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun yeah. fact. She's yeah. also a teacher of yeah. Milagros okay. Pereira. So, we come in the camera, maybe, this side. Right at the center of Celebrate Life. Let's clap for them all. Mrs. Lily de Souza. Next, we have our chief guest, Mrs. Balueta. And Dr. Malaika Gracious. Thank you, everyone. In the words of Saint Therese of Lisieux, the, lov the loveliest masterpiece of the heart of God is the love of a mother. So with this, we uh, delve into the award ceremony and we call upon Violet Pereira, So we have three finalists. We had over 50 poems entries. You can take this mic if you want. We will begin with the distribution of uh, gifts and certificates first and we keep the uh, prizes uh, third, second and first towards the end. Yeah, continue. Good evening. I'm Violet. I was writing to y'all all these days in, <laughs> on behalf of uh, HLI Goa. I think we missed something. We are married for 34 years. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We have uh, uh, all the, I mean, all the contestant, contestants are not yet come. Uh, some being a working day, they could not make it. So some of them have sent their representatives. So we are just uh, accordingly, like how they came, we took the names. So I'm just going to re uh, read the names. So you just please come immediately and uh, receive the certificate and the gift. Anjina Fernandez, please line up. Yeah, Monica Vaz. Jenny Falero, Maria Amanda Pereira, please uh, come, come, come. Anjana, come. Yeah. 
Calling upon our chief guest Buleta to present these gifts. Certificates, certificates. Okay, the certificates order is different. So I, I'll just call again, okay? Rosalind Fernandez, say it is easy to give the certificates first. Please come for Please put your hands together. Monica De Souza. Let's clap for Monica. Yeah. Clara Antonetta Rodriguez. Marisa Vaz. Let's put our hands together for all these participants. Valeneta Cardos, Lovina Fernandez, Princey De Silva, Artena Dias, Cresilla De Silva, Marisa Vaz. Gifts. Uh, we do the gifts and the certificates we give to you. In, they collect from there, yeah. Yes. Okay? It will save time. Please put your hands together. Cresilla De Silva is come? Yeah, okay. Dr. Aida Dorado. Mrs. Felicia Barreto. Margaret Pereira. Kindly show your face to the camera. It's going on YouTube. Resha Seth. Swizrel Fernandez. It would have been good if it's yeah. Yeah. to the world. Yeah. Maria Josefa Teresina Fernandez. Please put your hands together. Janin Pinto. Nadisha Coelho, Cheryl De Costa, Jacinta De Souza, Sabina Da Cunha, Maria Sera Silveira, SP De Souza, Susie Can you Mini. come? Can you come a little this side so that they can the camera can capture you? Suzy Menezes, Jezoina Flora Valadaris, Clara Rodriguez, Bernadita Pereira. Let's put our hands together for all of these amazing women and mothers. Serena Viagas, Celine Coelho Hurtado. Cindy Selma Clema, sorry. Cindy Clema Fernandez. Priti Figueredo. Joela Pereira. Vendira Mascarenas. Sarita Rebel Ribeiro. Maria Amanda Pereira. Jenny Falero. Monica Vaz. Angina Fernandez, Rosena Correa. Let's put our hands together for all of these wonderful mothers. They have written beautiful poems. Now we have the final three finalists. So, we can make them decide their poems. So we. So all are waiting for eagerly waiting for the results. So the third prize 
goes third place goes to any guesses mrs sabina dakunia put our hands together just hold on there just one moment because you have not collected the 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 cash prize yeah can give it to the chief guest put our hands yeah. together for mrs sabina yeah sabina you can keep your things there and come back so these three just finalists will also be reciting their poems today i hope they have their poems on their mobile are you having it on your mobile are you oh yes oh yeah i also have but it's quicker for them because we have to locate by number i give the mic to you good evening everyone oh. priceless gift from above being a mother in mother's arms a privileged sweet a bond that time cannot defeat with joy they nurture love complete in every laugh in every feet yet sacrifice a silent row that dreams of take a back seat now those sleepless nights still they vow their love for child eternal how their days are filled with endless care each moment tender beyond compare for in their hearts they always there their love a beacon strong and rare motherhood a journey grand a privilege joy and sacrifice hand in hand a testament of love forever planned thank you it was beautiful thank you sabina the second place goes to mrs joella perera let's put our hands Let's together see. for mrs joella perera Joella, you have your poem with you. You're going to keep it there. Come back, yeah. Those of you uh, who don't know her, please try and uh, see who she is. Go to a movie called Crazy Mogi, and she's the comedian there, along with John De Silva. sorry i'm little nervous <laughs> okay the name of my poem is a mother today and always mama mom mummy are not just words but emotions for many several responsibilities but values much more than just a nanny Motherhood is an honor an imaginary life achievement award being a mother is working endlessly without expecting any reward sometimes it is hard draining and exhausting being a mother at times judged by someone or the other it is god's plan to let us be our children's mother because they will never be loved the same by any other Motherhood is a journey sometimes wild sometimes mild a new life for the mother as well as the child there is joy selflessness pain and laughter i say so because i too am a mother of a child a lovely daughter thank you put our hands together for this amazing rhythmus poem and the first place goes to any guesses <laughs> you all don't know who are the other participants are mrs felicia barreto <laughs> let's together <laughs> let's put our hands together for mrs felicia barreto
we can congratulate every single participant and the winners. You may keep your stuff there and come back. Okay, over to you. Oh, you printed it. Thank you. Beautiful evening, everyone. Well, the name of my poem is Being Mother. It's a roller coaster ride with God by her side. It's a roller coaster ride with God by her side. Dawn to dusk, obligations abide. Yet, she takes the world in her stride. Dawn to dusk, obligations abide. Yet, she takes the world in her stride. It's knowing and discovering the strengths within, raising and celebrating the tiny human being. It's knowing and discovering the strength within, raising and celebrating the tiny human being. Challenges, they come knocking in, yet she faces them all with a grin. Challenges, they come knocking in, yet she faces them all with a grin. It's the noblest task and a divine gift God in his bounty has blessed us with. It's the noblest task and a divine gift God in his bounty has blessed us with. To be a guardian angel on earth, a beautiful journey right to adulthood from birth. To be a guardian angel on earth, a beautiful journey right to adulthood from birth. Thank you. That was an incredible poem. We, on behalf of the organizers, we sincerely thank all the participants for your beautiful poems. Thank you.